Hello students, welcome to yet another session about P5JS. Today, let's see how we can make grids in our canvas and draw shapes inside these grids. And eventually, let's try and make some patterns with these grids. To start with, I've created the basic P5JS um, replet. And at this point, I do not need all these lines, so let me just comment them. And let me just do a simple background. And let's run this. Perfect, all is well. Now I'm just going to make my canvas a little smaller. It's always easy and faster to work with a smaller canvas. And then at any point, we can go back and increase the size of the canvas. Now we have a 400 by 400 canvas. Now let's quickly see how this can be split into a grid. So let's try and open our draw file. Let's create. Let's refresh the page one more time. OK, now we are back. We have the script file. And let's now make the draw file again. OK, all is well. So now we have our 400 by 400 grid. And we all know the 0, 0 point is always at the top left. So this point is we have moved 400 pixels along the X axis and we are still at 0 for Y. So this point is going to be 0 for X and 400 for Y. And this point is 400 comma 400. So the midpoint of this canvas is going to be half of the width and half of the height, which is 200 by 200. So if I simply call the point function and say 200 comma 200, and just to make sure that the point is visible, let's add a stroke color. And let's also add some weight for the stroke. This will decide how big the point is. Now let's see what happens. We are seeing no point. And of course, increasing the stroke weight will make the point bigger. So if I make the point just size one, then we are seeing our point here at the center. So we know our middle point. Now what we want to do is we want to make grids here like this. Equal grids. Now let's start by giving a size for ourselves, let's say 10. So then this point is going to be 10 comma 0. So if I go back here and make the stroke by 10 and try to draw a point at 10, 0, I should see the point somewhere here. If I increase this to 20, it goes here so on and so forth. If I increase this to 200, I should see it at the middle. So now let's make a variable to keep track of our cell size. And we have decided we're going to make it 10. So what we are now going to try to do is draw a point at at row uh, where the y is zero, which is the top row. So we all we want to do is draw some points here, all cell width. So now that means given that our cell size is 10, the total width is 400, we should draw 40 points. So let's see how to do it. So I can simply make a for loop or let be equal to zero. So this is how we are going to do the loop. So we are creating a new variable i and its value is going to start at zero and 
we are going to continue this loop until the i value is less than or equal to 40, which is the total number of points that we want to draw. And every time we're going to increase the i value by one. So if I just, for example, print i here, I should see the values from 0 to 40. So let's first see if that works. So open it in a new tab. If I go to inspect console, I should see the values getting printed 0 to 40. So what do I want to do? I want to not print, but rather draw a point at i. So the i value is going to be 0. The next time it's going to be 1 and then 2. So our i value is going like 0, 1, 2. But the points that I want to draw the dots are like 0, 10, 20. Why? Because my cell size is 10. So where should I draw the point at i times cell size? So 0 times 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 10. And my y value is always going to be 0. So now let's see how this looks. So we see all the 40 points here. If I make the weight a little smaller, then you see, we see the 40 points here. But now instead of drawing it at 0, if I draw it at 10, I will see all the points from 1 below. If I draw it at 200, I will see in the middle. So what if I draw this whole thing inside another for loop? So for let j equal to 0, j less than or equal to 40, j plus plus, I draw this for loop outside. So this whole for loop is inside another for loop. And instead of always putting it at 10 or 200, I'm going to put it at J times cell. So I should now see the points everywhere. Let's just fix this error here, less than or equal to 40. So I will see my points everywhere at the cell size. Now, instead of always making this 40, this is based on the height of the canvas and the size of my cell. So I'm going to do height by cell. And this is going to be width by cell. That's how we got 40, right? 400 by 10. So everything should still work the same. But this time, if I now increase the size of my cell, my grid will also adjust accordingly. I'm seeing dots everywhere at size with the size 100. If I make the cell size smaller, I will see the points everywhere close by. So that means I have actually found a way to get the center of or the exact point where my grid lies. Now, what if I let me go back to, let's keep this at 20, let's say. And now let's see. Okay, good. Now, what if instead of drawing a point here, I draw a circle at all these points? So, I times cell, comma j times cell. I do not see my circles because we have not given a fill color. So let's just go with a fill color of 50. Mm, we are still not seeing a circle because we did not give a radius. Let's or the diameter. This is the diameter. So we are drawing a circle at this X point, this Y point. And the diameter of the circle is going to be the size of the cell. So let's try and reduce the diameter by half. 
So now we have made a pattern by just drawing circles. So now if we increase the size of our grid, mm -hmm. it should all still work. Right? So now what if I fill these circles with a random color instead of keeping them all same colors. I'm going to give a random color anywhere from 0 to 255. And now the circles are being drawn every time in the draw loop and every time they are drawn with a new color. I can always stop this by saying no loop meaning the draw function will be called only once so we can see how the pattern looks. So this is the first time the pattern is drawn. Now if I refresh, the pattern will be drawn again. Now we see there are circles on the top, the half circles that we see, they are being drawn at the position 0, 0, 0, 0, 10. And if you don't want to see them, we just start our loop at 1. So that way we will not see these half circles anymore. But now we are seeing these half circles at the end because they are being drawn at the edge. So instead of less than equal to, we can just do less than so it will not touch the borders here. So now we have our pattern. And now if I remove no loop, you will see we are getting these patterns. Now, we could also fill the colors with the RGB pattern. Right now, we are filling colors here with a number 0 to 255, right? So this is always in a gray scale, where uh, 0 is black and uh, 255 is white. The other way we can specify colors is by specifying the RGB value, which is the red, green, and blue. So that means we need to give three numbers, one random number for red, one random number for green, one random number for blue. And now our circles will all be in different colors. Our circles all have an outer line which is coming from the stroke. If I remove the stroke and rather say no stroke, then my circles will be there without an outer line and the pattern looks like this. So what are the other things we can do here? My cell size is always fixed at 20. Can I change the cell size dynamically? So to do that, I'm bringing in a new component called a slider. I'm just going to call this variable a cell slider. And we are going to create this slider at the setup function. You would create slider function and you're going to say the minimum value of this is going to be 5. The maximum value is going to be 50. And my cell size is going to depend on the value of this slider. So now what happens, I now have a slider and I can decrease the size of my cell and see no pattern change. So here we can see the when the value is 5, we see so many circles and the value is 50, we see uh, less circle. So if you leave it somewhere in the middle, then a pattern looks like this. 
Okay, so we understood how to split up our canvas into a grid and place circles at all these grids. Now, if we go back here, the points we are drawing the circles are all the middle points of the grid. Right? You, we could also actually see the grid by drawing a, a shape like a square here. So let's see how we can do it. I have the center point of the grid. So that means I need to draw a square of cell size with the center point. So I need to make my grid node center. So what does it mean making the red mode center? When I draw a rectangle, usually what do I do? I specify the X point, the Y point, and then the width, and then the height. Now this X and Y point, do you want to specify the center of the rectangle or the top left of the rectangle? That's what is controlled by the rect mode. And by default, the rect mode is always set to recognize the top left, but now we want to draw the rectangle by specifying the center of the rectangle. So that's why we at the setup we have set rect mode center. And now after drawing the circle, we are going to change the fill color to Let's say 51 and we are going to draw a rectangle with the same point and size cell. Now let's see what happens. We will exactly see the oh, okay. So we do not have to fill, we actually need stroke. And we don't need any fill because we want to see what is inside the tank. So now we see our grids here. And now we reduce the size. We can see that our grid is there with the rectangles. Now if I remove the circle. Okay, perfect, good. Now what are the other patterns we can do. Now that I have my rectangle, I know the point, the center point. Let's say the center point is uh, x comma y and the cell size is 10. OK. Now that I know the center point, I can find the top left point by doing x minus 10 comma y minus 10. That will be the top left point because only if I move 10 and 10, I would get here. So the, uh, the top right point would be If this point is X, this point is going to be X plus 10, comma, Y minus 10. It's still minus for Y because this point is below here. And now this point will be X minus 10 because it is to the left and Y plus 10. Hopefully this makes sense. Just uh, we are just calculating the X and Y coordinates based on the graph. We know this point is X, Y, and we know the cell size. So this point will be it's to the right, so X has increased, and it's to the bottom, so this will be Y plus 10. So those are the four points. Now what we are going to do is after drawing the rectangle, I'm also going to draw a line. Let's say like this. 
So I need this point, which is X minus 10, Y minus 10, and this point, which is X plus 10, Y plus 10. So my I value plus the cell size, my Y value plus the cell size, okay, which is cell. Actually, let's start with the minus of the top left point. And let's go to the bottom right point, X and Y. So now we should see the diagonal lines as well. All right. Now, if we want to see the diagonal lines on the other side. All we have to do is. This point is going to be. X. Plus 10. Y minus 10, so that is this point. X minus 10, Y minus 10 is this point. Going down. Let's see. X minus 10. Y minus 10 is this point. X plus 10. Y plus 10 is this point. Now we want to draw a line from the bottom shape. So all we have to do is copy this. And paste it here. And now we go. Plus, minus, minus, plus. So plus, minus, minus, plus. So now we should see the grid going everywhere. Now let's for a second remove these rectangles and run this one more time. So we are seeing the grid now. Now what if I bring this back to zero? And less than or equal to and run this. Now we so see the grid everywhere. And now I'm drawing both the rectangles both the lines of the diagonals, what if I draw either one of them randomly? So I'm going to generate a random number. And uh, I want to generate a random number between 0 and 1. So let me make a list that contains these numbers. So RR Albert has 0. Or one. So give me a random R. So this R value will either be zero or one. So if R value is zero, then I will draw this line. Else, I'm going to draw this line. So now let's see what happens to our pattern. Let's bring back the no loop one more time. And now we see a maze like this. And now if I change the cell size, oh, okay, I cannot make it work if there is no loop. So only if I reduce the cell size, I'll start seeing patterns like this. Let's run this one more time. So let's bring back the no loop. So we are seeing a maze kind of thing. So that's pretty much I wanted to cover for this class. With this, uh, the homework is going to be coming up with patterns of your choice following the grid logic that we did. So we need a nested for loop, a for loop inside a for loop, and have a cell size on the top. Make it dynamic if you can, and 
instead of drawing a circle or a rectangle, see if you can um, refer to the P five J as reference, and you can look up for any shape, let's say a square, and then you can see how a square can be drawn. How a square can be drawn with a round edge and so on. So use the line, the point, or the circle, square, or rectangle. Try to fill random colors and try to make your own patterns. Try and make at least two or three patterns, and that will be your homework. That's all for today's class. I will talk to you guys again in the next one. Cheers, bye.